Hi friends, in this video, we are going to see principle of operation of a DC generator. Basically, DC generator working principle is based on dynamically induced EMF. So what is that? It is nothing but Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. So let's see what that law is all about. So Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction states that whenever the flux linking with a conductor changes an electromotive force that is EMF is set up in that conductor means whenever a change in flux is associated with a conductor I will get EMF and that EMF is nothing but dynamically induced EMF. So that I will represent as E equal to d5 by dt. Now question is when I will get change in a flux there are two options. I should have a relative motion between a conductor and a flux. So this is a very important statement. What it requires for a DC generator to induce a EMF is relative motion. between conductor and flux. Relative motion can be achieved in two ways. First, I will keep flux stationary and conductor moving or second case, I will keep conductor stationary and flux moving. So I will note down relative motion can be obtained by two ways. In first case, flux is stationary, conductor is moving. Or in second case, I can have conductor stationary. and flux is moving. Since we are studying DC generator, flux required to produce a motion or a EMF induced in case of a generator will be generated from an electromagnet as the effect of DC current. Now what do you mean by electromagnet? I will have a conductor wound over a magnetic material and that conductor is carrying a current that current is responsible for production of flux around it and that is given by right hand thumb rule what it states hold a current carrying conductor such a way that outstretched thumb will determine the direction of current then curl finger will represent magnetic flux associated with it. So to produce a magnetic flux here we are going to use a DC supply that will give you DC current and DC current will give you a flux which will remain constant with respect to time. So for a DC generator we are going to adopt a technique where flux is stationary but conductor is moving because flux is produced by a DC supply. Now conductor should be moving. How we can move a conductor? So that action will be taken with the help of prime mover. So prime mover, 
we have external device which will make sure that conductor will rotate so the prime mover examples are diesel engine steam turbine or diesel turbine etc so these are the external agents which will produce a torque which will be given to conductor which is placed inside a magnetic flux in order to have a rotation of a conductor and that conductor when it is cutting with a steady magnetic flux there will be a relative motion between flux and conductor and by faraday's law of electromagnetic induction emf will be induced in that conductor since for a single turn the emf that i am getting will be very less so we form a conductor of several wires or several coils ultimately forming a winding and that winding is called as a armature so in dc machine the emf is induced in the armature and the winding which is responsible for production of this is called as armature winding so this is what a basic principle of a dc generator now we need to check what is the direction of this emf induced with respect to direction of magnetic flux and relative motion between conductor and flux for that we are going to apply fleming's right hand rule so it states that if three fingers of a right hand namely thumb index finger and middle finger are outstretched so that every one of them is at right angles with remaining two so it is like this thumb index finger middle finger okay each one of them is right angle with remaining two if in this position the index finger represents the direction of magnetic flux outstretched thumb determine the direction of relative motion between conductor and flux then outstretched middle finger will give you a direction of emf induced once again i'll tell you the directions of the fingers if first finger or index finger determine the direction of magnetic flux outstretched thumb determine the direction of relative motion between a conductor and a flux then middle finger will give you a direction of emf induced so direction of emf induced means if that end i am connecting the load what will be the direction of current basically if the armature windings are connected to a load what is the direction of current flowing through that load nothing but a direction of emf induced let's have a look for this cases where i can determine the direction of emf induced so here i am having magnetic poles formed because of the electromagnet north pole and south pole now we know magnetic flux always completed path from north to south and it is in a circular form so magnetic flux direction here will be from north to south here a conductor is 
प्लस लाइक दिस एंड कंडक्टर इज मूविंग थ्रू दिस फ्लस इन दिस डायरेक्शन सो दिस इज अ डायरेक्शन ऑफ रिलेटिव मोशन of conductor now what will be the direction of emf induced which is nothing but a current if i close that winding through a load so let's apply fleming's right hand rule as we discussed earlier this will be the direction of magnetic flux and this will be the direction of relative motion so obviously outstretched middle finger will be like this so it is coming out of the paper so that we represent by a dot so here i'll represent the first case where i determine the direction of emf induced or a current and that is nothing but current coming out let's see second case so i'm keeping the flux direction same that mean this is south pole and here i'm having north pole so obviously flux will have the direction like this north to south conductor is placed inside this time this will be the direction of motion of a conductor so relative motion is this way so let's apply fleming's right hand rule now this is the motion this is flux so third finger is like this so middle finger is pointing towards the paper so current is going inside the plane and that is determined by cross so here i got current going in let's have another case where i'm changing the poles now this becomes north and south will be like this direction of flux this time will be like this but it is north to south only and conductor is place whose relative motion will be like this now let's apply fleming's right hand rule north to south so this will be the direction and this will be the relative motion of a conductor so it is bit difficult to show actually because it will like this relative motion flux will be north to south so it is finding very difficult me to have this but ultimately if you relate with remaining two cases you will come to know that direction of current will be towards paper so in the third case once again i am getting current going in and finally if i change the relative motion of conductor how it will look like this is the relative motion of conductor now flux like this so obviously current will be coming out so coming out 
will be determined or represented by a dot. So this is a phenomena we have used to determine direction of EMF induced in DC generator. Direction of EMF induced can be reversed if I change the relative motion of a conductor or direction of flux. Just have a look. Here I am keeping flux same. For A and B cases, direction of flux is same, but I change the relative motion of a conductor and hence I am getting EMF induced of different directions. Whereas in C and D case, what I have done? I have changed the flux direction. In this case, it is north-south. Earlier it was south-north. And what I will get here, cross and dot. So direction of flux is same for these two cases. Change in the direction of motion will give you a, a reverse EMF. And whereas here, if I change the so you have to just concentrate for let's say A and C motion is remaining same flux is changing the polarity because of that. I am getting over here dot here cross. Same is the case for these two. Whenever you want to reverse the direction of EMF induced in a conductor, you either change the relative motion of a conductor or direction of flux. If you change both, then you will not get any change in the direction of EMF induced. So is very important and that is given by Fleming's right hand rule. Let's move to the next part that is magnitude of EMF induced. Now let's see what is the magnitude of this induced EMF. So the magnitude of induced EMF is given by E equal to B L V sin theta. Since B L V are constant, I can club them into one parameter, which is nothing but E M sin theta. The unit is volt. Now this E M F induced depends on so many terms. So let's list out one by one. So here B is nothing but flux density and that is given in Weber per meter square. Then I have L which is nothing but active length of a conductor. unit is meter. V is relative velocity of conductor with respect to magnetic flux. Unit is meter per second. And theta is the angle between two planes. Two planes are plane of rotation and plane of magnetic flux. 
so theta is the angle between plane of rotation and plane of magnetic flux measured from axis of plane of flux so this is the emf induced so you can say the emf induced is alternating quantity where the magnitude depends upon perpendicular component of the velocity so basically this v sin theta is nothing but component of a velocity which will come in perpendicular with the plane of flux because this is a plane of flux and conductor is moving in this direction so definitely at one particular point it is cutting or maximum flux is linked with the conductor at that point i am getting a maximum magnitude of emf induced in some of the point it will be like this parallel so no flux is cutting to a conductor at that time emf induced is zero so here the note that you have to remember is magnitude of emf depends on perpendicular component perpendicular component of relative velocity of conductor so let's have a look by considering some of the points of a conductor so here i am having plane of magnetic flux like this where this is a axis of the plane i'm going to consider three cases so for second case the plane of magnetic flux is once again same and for third case also it is same now for the first case the plane of conductor will be like this let's take this is a axis and consider this is a plane in second case consider this as axis and plane will be like this in third case i will get plane of a conductor like this so let's look at the theta so theta is nothing but this angle let's name this is nothing but axis of plane of flux now in first case there is some angle theta between these two planes so i can say the emf induced is directly proportional to v sin theta in second case these two planes are perpendicular
so what is theta theta is this angle which is 90 degree so i can say theta equal to 90 degree hence emf induced will be maximum third case planes are parallel obviously here theta is 0 degree and hence no flux cutting inductor so e is 0 so i'll get a emf which is proportional to v sin theta and v sin theta is nothing but perpendicular component of v because if you resolve into two components it will get like this this is v sin theta and this is v cos theta so emf induced is in an alternating nature emf induced in a dc machine is ac in nature so it will be like this it will reach maximum value at pi by 2 it will become zero at pi negative maximum at 3 pi by 2 and once again it will become 0 at 2 pi so from 0 to 2 pi it will complete one cycle now the question is we are studying DC machines DC generator how come EMF induces AC and still we call that as a DC machine so here inside a motor or machine or a generator we have one rectifier which converts emf induced which is in ac into dc so definitely here rectification takes place but that rectification is not electronic that means no semiconductor is used it is mechanical and the device which is responsible for conversion of ac into dc is called as commutator a device is used in dc generator to convert alternating induced emf to unidirectional dc emf or it also called as mechanical rectifier So every DC machine has commutator inside it because in DC generator EMF induced is AC but at the output I want only a DC voltage. So commutator take a responsibility of conversion AC into DC in case of DC generator. Thank you.